In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a custom tool to extend the functionality of the Unlayer Builder. Custom tools allow developers to tailor the builder for their specific use case, whether it's creating custom buttons, adding unique widgets, or integrating external services. Unlayer offers built-in tools such as buttons, images, and text, but there are times when you need something custom for your application. By using Unlayer's SDK, you can create your own tools and integrate them into the builder seamlessly. For this demo, I have set up a simple application with the builder embedded, as you can see in my browser. Now, let's get started. I have created a custom.js file where we will put all the code for our custom tool. Once we are ready, we will include the custom.js file in the init code. To create a custom tool, you'll use the unlayer.register tool method. Each tool needs to have a unique name. This name is internal and not visible to end users. It should be in slug format with no spaces. Next, we will pass a label which is visible to end users, and this is what they will identify the tool as. Each tool also has an icon that is visible to end users. This could either be a URL to your icon's image, or you can pick any icon from the Font Awesome library. For this example, we will find a suitable icon from fontawesome.com. Let's use a smiley face. We will note the unique class name of this icon and use it in our custom tool code. Next, we will define what display modes are supported by this tool. It could be email, web, or pop-up. Options is where we will define the tool's properties, and values is the initial values for those properties. We will leave it blank for this simple example. Renderer is where you define the content that your tool will create. This is done using an HTML template. Each renderer consists of a viewer, exporters, and head. In most cases, viewer and exporters contain the same HTML template, but there are cases when these could be different. Viewer is the tool's template which will be visible to the end user when they use your tool within the builder. The exporters are what would be exported in the final output, such as HTML, passed to your application. Here I am adding a viewer that simply outputs a div with some text in it. Now I'll add the exporters. Since our tool is supported in multiple display modes, we will add an exporter for each of those. This is especially useful because the HTML output required for email clients can be very different from web browsers. For now, I will use the same div with text for both exporters. The third and optional part of the renderer is head, where you can define any JavaScript or CSS that is required by this tool in the HTML head. This could be used to load third-party libraries or any other dependency that the tool may have. Now that our simple custom tool code is ready, let's pass it to the builder as custom.js. We will pass the absolute URL of our tools custom.js file. Relative URLs will not work because the builder runs inside an iframe environment. Let's go to the browser to test our simple custom tool. There it is, our tool with the smiley face icon. When I drop it to my design, you can see the same output we defined in viewer inside the renderer. Let's change this output a bit and see what happens. We will only change the viewer for now, but not the exporters. You can now see the updated output when I drop the tool to my design. Now, let's go to preview to see what the final export output looks like. The preview output is different because this is the final HTML output generated by the exporters. Let's change the exporter output and see what happens. I will use slightly different outputs for web and email modes. I am currently running the builder in email mode. There it is. You can see the email exporter output in preview. And that's how you create a custom tool to extend the functionality of the Unlayer Builder. We will now explore advanced use cases with properties and property editors. Every tool needs certain properties to create content. 
Properties are variables that the end user can modify, such as colors, font sizes, text alignment, images, and more. Property group is a collapsible panel that is used to organize properties into a group. This makes the experience of editing a template simpler and easier. Each property is assigned a property editor, which is a UI control widget used by the end user to modify the property value. For example, color picker, slider, toggle, etc. We have many built-in property editors available, and you can also create a custom property editor. Now, let's add some properties to our custom tool. In this example, we will add two properties to our tool, one to change the text color and the other to change the background color. Both of these properties will use a color picker widget to let the end user modify colors. I just defined a property group called colors. Now I'll add our first property inside it. This property will let the end user change text color of the content, so we will call it text color. The label is what the end user will see this property defined as. The default value is initial value before the end user can change it. We can use black as the default text color. Widget is the UI control widget used by the user to modify the property value. The builder comes with a set of built-in property editors that you can easily use. For text color, we want to use the built-in color picker widget. You can also create a custom property editor for more advanced use cases. We will explore that later. Let's go to the builder and see our new property in action. There it is. You can now see the text color property inside the color's property group that is collapsible. The color picker widget is also added, which lets the end users easily choose a color. However, you will see that when I picked a color, it had no effect on the output. This is because we did not change the renderer yet. Let's do it now. We will first change the viewer so the text color in the builder changes to the chosen color. We will add a style attribute to the div and use the CSS color property. The values object passed to the render function contains all the property values. So we will get the text color property from values. The name of the value should match the name of the property that we defined earlier. Let's test this in the builder now. You can see the chosen color now shows in the content. However, the output in the preview still does not have the chosen color. This is because we only updated the viewer and not the exporter. Let's update the exporter the same way we did the viewer. We'll test this in the builder one more time to make sure everything looks good. Perfect! Our property is now working as expected. The text color is reflected in the builder and also in the final output. I will quickly add another property to change the background color of the output. We will keep the default value as white and we will use the same color picker widget for this. You can now see the background color property right below the text color. Let's test it out. Let's do red text and yellow background. There we go! You have a custom tool that changes output based on end user preferences. For more advanced use cases, you can create custom property editors here that are tightly integrated with your application. Thanks for watching and happy building!